What's up, my brothers? Now, I want to come at you with a more measured approach. <laughs> my last video was pure emotion. I was just super excited, brothers. I haven't been this happy since 2018. 2018. It's been three years, three seasons since I've been this happy. I, this is... Man, I'm not saying Super Bowl. I'm not saying that. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that shit. But this is the this is the year that we can we can actually go deep in the playoffs. We can finally hit that NFC Championship game that has been so elusive over the last 25 years. This could be it, brothers. This could be it. I'm not saying Super Bowl, but we can we got to take baby steps. I mean, we ain't we ain't been at this shit for over 25 years. Baby steps. But if we can make it to the NFC Championship game, that would be a huge success in my book. It really would. Brothers, this, this was a hallmark game. Remember that game in 2018 when we went against the New Orleans Saints? How that was a landmark game that set the tone for the rest of the season. We went into the playoffs. We beat the Seattle Seahawks. You know, we, you know, if we would have done more, we could have beat the Los Angeles Rams. But games like that are landmark, hallmark games where you can just look back and you can say, hey, we did that. We overcame the odds and we won. This game will set the tone for the rest of the season. An, an undefeated team, you know, a lot of people are saying they're going to be the team to humble the Dallas Cowboys. An undefeated team, they come into this house and before we started playing lackadaisically on defense in the fourth quarter, we were destroying them. It wasn't even close. It wasn't close. Brothers, this offense is amazing. And it all starts with the offensive line. The offensive line are just creating massive gaps, massive holes for Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard. They are holding up, and they're giving Dak Prescott time to make decisions, to make important throws out there. This offense, it doesn't start with Kellen Moore. It doesn't start with Dak. It doesn't start with Ezekiel Elliott or the receivers. None of that. It starts with the offensive line. It starts with them big boys in the trenches. And that's what's been set. That's, that's been the tone. That's, that's what has made our offense spectacular thus far. That's what separates it from 2019 and 2020's offense. You know, we've been riddled with injuries across the offensive line for the last two years. Like, it's been incredible. Like, it's, it's been incredible how, how porous our offensive line has been over the last couple of years. That's why we ain't been to the playoffs. And now we've seen a resurgence with that offensive line. And a coincidence, we see a resurgence from Ezekiel Elliott. We see great play from Tony Pollard. We're seeing Dak Prescott making more precise throws because he has more time, better decisions. He's not forcing things out there. It all starts with this offensive line. And this is just, this has been incredible. Brothers, I hope you don't think I'm going too far by saying this, but I think we have a top three offense. And I honestly don't believe we have any weaknesses on the offensive side of the ball. I hope you don't think I'm going too far with that. We can run it down your throat. We can throw it all over the place. And our offensive coordinator is proven, is proven to be, he's, he's proven to be capable of creating game-breaking plays, commanding this offense that no offensive coordinator has done in a long time for these Cowboys. This, I honestly believe the Cowboys offense has zero weaknesses. I honestly believe that. The only thing that could derail this magnificent offense is injury. Most notably to that offensive line. If something happens to Tyron Smith, if something happens to Zach Martin, if something happens to anybody on that offensive line, it could be it could be dangerous for us. But as long as that O-line is healthy, 
as long as Dak is healthy, we're all good. On the defensive side of the ball, Dan Quinn, he's really making me eat my words. He's really like, he's like, shut the fuck up and watch me coach this defense. And I have to say, thus far, I am eating my words. If this man can keep this up, I will take back every fucking thing I said about him. I will. Dan Quinn, my hat's off to you, sir. Trayvon Diggs is, is, he's a superstar, man. He is a superstar. He is actually dwarfing his brother. <laughs> he's dwarfing his brother right now. Now, I still respect Stephon Diggs, no, no question about it. But Trayvon Diggs is starting to emerge as the number one Diggs in the family. My God, man. Dude had two picks today. He's had a pick. He's li literally had a pick in all four games this season. He's had seven picks in the last nine games. If that's not a superstar, I don't know what is. I just hope the man stays humble. But... He's been fucking brilliant. Phenomenal. Randy Gregory. He can't put down the weed. But the offensive linemen, they can't put him down. <laughs> they can't take him out. That's all I'm saying. He can't put down the weed, but they can't put him down. The man had two sacks today. You know, I've lost my patience with Randy Gregory a long time ago. But I'm glad Jerry Jones... And the Cowboys top brass are more patient than I am because he has been, he's been, man, he's been providing a hellacious pass rush. More so than Demarcus Lawrence has in the last year and a half. That's all I got to say. And I'm not trying to take shots at Demarcus Lawrence while he's down, but I'm just being real. Just being fucking real. This defensive line, man, it's... I haven't seen the defensive line look this good in, man, it's been years since I've seen the defensive line look this good. Man, the Cowboys, Cowboys fans, y'all know we, one of the things that have been plaguing us, even when we've been good, has been our defensive line. Our secondary and our defensive line. In 2018, the reason why we lost to the Rams in the divisional round was because our defensive line couldn't stop the run. We couldn't do shit. If we had half of the competency of this line back then, oh, we would have been to the NFC Championship game. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. This defensive line is looking impressive. The only thing that I'm still, like, we're still lacking is the secondary. Now, we have made some gains. We have made some serious gains. We have made significant strides over the last few years when it comes to our uh, defensive secondary. We really have. But it's still our weakest link. And it showed It showed in the comeback, uh, the, the, the mini comeback that the Carolina Panthers had. I mean, Jalen Hurts last week had over 300-some yards passing. Like, our, our secondary is still the weak link, even though Trayvon Diggs is an emerging superstar. He is a lockdown corner. He's fucking amazing. We still, it's still our weakness, and we still need a little bit of help back there. We really do. Maybe in the next coming draft, we can we can get someone get someone of quality back there to pair along with Trayvon Diggs. Anthony Brown is hit and miss. You know, Anthony Brown is okay, but he's not like. He he doesn't he doesn't have that it factor like Trayvon does. He he doesn't have it. Like Anthony Brown is a good third option. He really is. He's a good third option. But he's not he's not one he's not a one, he's not a two. He's not. He's not. We still need some help back there. We need some help in the safety position and the safety positions too. We really do. That is our weakest link at the moment on the defensive side of the ball. If we're not ca careful, it could really haunt us in the future, especially if we go against uh, a competent quarterback. Like, I mean, listen, Justin Herbert is, is pretty fucking good. Sam Darnold is good in his own right. A new change of scenery, getting away from the Jets, he's good in his own right. And, and of course, you got the GOAT Tom Brady. So it's not like we've been facing, like, just straight-up trash. We haven't. 
Even I, I a lot of people are hard on Jalen Hurts, but I still think Jalen Hurts can do some good things in this league. I honestly do. So we haven't been going against complete trash, but I feel like in the playoffs, when every quarterback is good, when every quarterback can just take advantages of take advantage of your weaknesses, we have to tighten that up. We really have to tighten that up because that could be our Achilles heel. It really could. It really could. But, and another thing that a lot of you brothers have been pointing out in my comment sections. Mike McCarthy, like I said, we have the best coaching staff in the division. But I didn't say head coach in the division. I still think Ron Rivera is the best head coach in the NFC East. I still think he's the best coach. Mike McCarthy, has he's been shaky, man. He's been fucking shaky. Thank God we got Dan Quinn and we got Kellen Moore to balance out the bullshit. But Mike McCarthy, you're going to have to tighten it up, man. You're going to have to tighten it up and do some cardio. <laughs> That's what you brothers have been telling me. Because uh, like a couple months ago, uh, leading up, like I was getting kind of heavy. I had to do some cardio. A lot of you brothers have been pointing that shit out. And thank you. Thank you for keeping me in check. We need to do the same thing with Mike McCarthy. We, his ass needs to tighten up, man. Not just on the field, but you need to hit the gym too. But enough about that. <laughs> but Mike McCarthy, he needs to tighten this shit up, man. Because, believe it or not, no matter how much talent we have, no matter how good we are, we only go as, as, as far as he takes us. It's Mike McCarthy. He's the head coach. We only go as, as far as he allows. He cannot be a weak link in the coaching staff, especially the head coach. He's the head of the snake. We can't afford to have him slipping up, calling bullshit, wasting time, poor clock management, poor decisions. He's got to tighten this shit up. He really does. Because he could be the difference between an NFC Championship game appearance and a first-round exit. He's the difference. That's all I'm saying. But brothers, we are three and one. Of course, we're winning the NFC East. Uh, of course, our ambitions are much bigger than the NFC East. We've, we've faced very good competition. Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. We went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them at Tampa, first game of the season. Then we beat the Chargers, who beat the Chiefs last week. And then today we we gave the Carolina Panthers their first L of the season. We beat an undefeated team. So I don't want to hear any of the haters saying we can't beat a team over 500. We can't beat a good team, this and that. Motherfucker, we beat two of them. And we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tampa Bay in the first game of the season at Tampa Bay, fresh off of their Super Bowl victory. Brothers, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think any team... That day could have beaten Tampa Bay. I'm just being real. I don't think any other team could have beat them that day. I'm not saying that Tampa Bay isn't going to have any losses throughout the season. They already suffered one. But I'm talking about that day, the first game at home, after, fresh after a Super Bowl victory, no team was going to beat them. And the Cowboys went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And we should have won that game. We should have won that game. But brothers, we're three and one, we're leading the NFC East. Let's see what happens. I'm not gonna say Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, but if we keep this up, we will definitely make an NFC Championship game appearance. That's all I'm saying. It looks fucking phenomenal. All right, brothers, peace.